Welcome back everyone to theCUBE studio here at Palo Alto in the heart of Silicon Valley for the Silicon Valley AI Infrastructure Leaders Program. The Cube partnered with the NYSE Wired community. Hung Hao is here, he's the co-founder and CEO of Butler, butler.io, butler.com, compelling IoT device. We're going to get into it. I'm sure there's a lot of AI to it. Hung Hao, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. So first of all, you got a little prop here. Shoot the camera on that prop. We'll see the device there. Hold that, hold that up, show what we got here. It's a complete wireless device. Just take a minute to install. So let's get into it. You're manufacturing this. So what are you guys doing? What is this product? What's the business all about? Give us an update on that. So we're MIT spin off. We designed and developed this tiny sensor in my hand that's real-time taking environmental temperature, the surface temperature of the environment, and translate it into indoor location, body posture, and number of people. I can easily snap it up right now in the studio and then detect there's like three people sitting down, something like that. But so you can imagine very natural use cases is in, in people's home for let's say in an elderly care facility or people's home, you can detect whether elderly grandma or grandpa fall down. So it's for life-saving use cases. The other strong use case is actually in almost all the buildings for detecting utilization, occupancy. Right now we're the leader in the smart office space for a lot of large Fortune 500 uh, enterprise. So, Does it know what I had for lunch? <laughs> it knows <laughs> you're be, tired and distracted. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be shocked with what we've seen from the sensors. A lot of offices is usually people come in and then like uh, hang out at the, around the lunch table, have the lunch. You guys let make a guess what's next uh, after the Bathroom lunch. break. Uh, that's a good guess. What about after bathroom? Sit at their desk and stare at their screen. <laughs> you're, still, you're, you're being a little bit too diligent, you know, in a way. What's the, Go a little bit out of the box. What are they doing? I uh, guess like what after like the um, uh, staring at their screen or like what after. They go, uh, go Bingo, when you're they top. leave, right? When they you're, punch you're, out. You're smarter than our MIT nerd. When, so they, <laughs> when they sneak out of the office, you mean? Exactly, <laughs> after lunch. Um, what we've seen from a lot of offices, we implemented very unfortunately, or very fortunately for those employees, after lunch, they just go home. So that's a reality today for a lot of large commercial footprints. Yeah, and, and the whole work at home, forcing back to the office. And also there's an energy issue too, like if it's not happening, there's so much you can do if you have that information. Yeah, so people tend to, I think even with this topic that they relate to AI. Frankly, just that you walk into any meeting without knowing the title, you can talk about AI. But, <laughs> um, but in general, energy is related there, right? So like, a lot of times we, we didn't consider what's the cost of like, making those uh, AI functionalities. Sometimes when, when we look back, because we have use cases, of course, uh, AI fault detection and also in sustainability. When we look at the industry, sometimes people overcorrect a lot, right? Like they sort of, hate fossil fuels, but think about all the solar panel, the embedded energy is huge, yeah. just to make a statement, uh, and then trying to build all this to say that they are environmental friendly, but the reality probably is on the other track. Um, so similarly, I would say this day, a lot of people spend uh, a lot of energies or focus into obviously the, the pillars of AI, there's reasoning, there's what we do, perception, yeah. there's also memory, uh, a couple of pillars. But when we reach this like um, reality today is that foundationally we just don't have enough data in our real world to yeah. Yeah. help the AI to make the right decision. So long story short, we're, we're more belong to the perception part. Yeah, so you guys have the debate, but you're sensing a lot of things, so it's not just tracking. Talk, go into talk the technology, so mm -hmm. temperature, the ambiance, the, the lay of the land. Where does that go? Because you've got a lot of data coming in. What, what are you guys doing? Take us through some of the, uh, the inside the engine of the, of the software. Mm -hmm. So obviously we're, we always call our, ourselves very humble um, neurons um, inside buildings. Because mm -hmm. like buildings, think about cameras, they're eyes of buildings. But do you want eyes everywhere in your, in your bedroom? In your no, <laughs> human privacy. Bathroom. Exactly. Surveillance culture. But yeah. you're getting data though. You're sensing what air, temperature, body heat, obviously sensing the people. I mean, what's some of the th things you guys are getting? We're very focused. We want to be the best in terms of what I call it. Again, talking about AI perception here, we want to be the sense of touch in the building. 
So the temperature of it, whether there's people like occupying the space, is a is somebody lie down on the floor? That's like yeah. an emergency, things like that. But the other modality you just mentioned, I mean, air quality obviously that's like a sense of smell mm -hmm. in the buildings, right? So at this moment, we only detect temperature, but from temperature, you'll be shocked that how these days AI models can derive from that, generating high fidelity location of people, body posture of people, but all without privacy issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, so, so can you, could you actually identify the individual? There's absolutely no PI. <laughs> right, but, but they could. But, but could you? Uh, I would say feasibility. In, in other words, would the technology enable you to? And so if, if, that's, if that's so, then you have to have some kind of confidence level to the customer that, that um, you, you, you've stopped. I, I, I mean, like, I'm only seeing if you don't violate first principle of physics, if you put enough um, nerves like us <laughs> into it, we can get it solved. But it's really whether the point I was making in the beginning, whether it was the cost or not, right. or whether we're doing the right thing to the world at all. So in this particular case, I will only use a right cost um, example. Let's say in senior care home, is there a need to distinguish whether it's like a grandma or grandpa, if they li live together, then it makes sense. Yep. It's feasible technological wise to understand mm -hmm. from their gait speed. The oscillation, even from our sensor, everyone looked like just thermal blocks. <laughs> you couldn't differentiate. It's really, really hard to differentiate even, um, let's say, a bag of dumplings, human shapes, <laughs> like the same human body temperature versus the people, right? But our core tech really be able to, a uh, very unique model, really be able to distinguish even the same body temperature object versus human being. And also, through the way they move around, we also can figure out whether this is like person A, person B, right. yeah. based on their gait. Okay, so, so in theory, you could opt in for that if, if you wanted to, right? Is that true or? Um, but it will take, again, it's a, it's a matter of cost, of cost yeah. right? Then like, do you want to pour a bunch of data off like um, labeling, this is the person A's blah or person yeah. B's blah, and then it's a lot of frames of data too, because yeah, it's no like sense. throughout the time. Well, what I love about what you're doing is, I mean, I think, I can see the use cases, obviously, uh, for care is great, office buildings, but it's an IOT device. At the end of the day, you're seeing the trends. I mean, the old school is RFID tracking, go to an event, you can see what people are doing for retail stores. But when you get into like instrumentation of the area, you're seeing robotics become a big thing. So what's your, how do you see this connecting into the next level, which is, if you go there, you believe this is going to get bigger and better, more and data is coming in. You know, who's going to sweep the floor? Robotics. You know, we're going to, you know, we see AI. <laughs> mm. Jensen Wong said it, robotics will happen this decade. So, so better robotics is coming, whether it's cleaning, tasks. So you're going to see that mapping. With what do the floors look like? I want to ingest the architectural plans. So as you start to go down that road, I can envision that a use case. What's your, what's your reaction to that? Because, I mean, obviously this is the tip of the iceberg. It's a beautiful device, by the way. I love the, the look. Um, I can see that being installed for benefit, not so much privacy, but like, what's your vision on that? So uh, starting from the like cleaning robot, <laughs> we actually, <laughs> the fun fact is that like, um, we got customers like using us for smart cleaning, obviously, knowing it's not about robot vision, it's re really about like uh, vision really? or perception of like whether the place being used or not, right? Just actually- yeah, Cleaned it yesterday, but no one was there all day. So why <laughs> go back and do it? Yeah, like continue story of the people leaving the office 2 p.m. You know who, give a guess, like who is the one that's sticking there forever yeah. in the office besides the employees? Developers. <laughs> <laughs> besides <laughs> the developers? Besides the developers <laughs> who no, stick there forever. The cleaning staff. Yeah. Here you go. So like, unfortunately, nobody even used the freaking desk and then they have to go after yeah. every single staff. I might be wrong because one more person usually always there is a, is a receptionist. <laughs> <laughs> the poor reception yeah, 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 always yeah, there. Yeah. And the if they were real stuff. developers, they'd be working all night long. The lonely They'd have lunch yeah. brought yeah. in. Mm. Yeah, but this is but this is the, where IoT goes and AI is smart. So again, I'm just trying to get yeah. your thoughts because my instantly robotics came right to mind. Mm -hmm. uh, automation is a hot trend. The digitization of the assets are going to start to come into play. Mm. So having that data is, I mean, huge. So looking back, I mean, like we all see this as, as a new wave of revolution, right? It's about the collective intelligence. The last round of it is a collective information. Yeah. So how do we make use of that vast amount of data floating around? So similarly, if it's just one single robot, I mean, we, we come from, first of all, Butler come from MIT Media Lab City Science Group. We are really 
building and city nurse. Yeah. So like one way to think about- A lot of experimentation, a lot of cycles on what the future, imagine the future yeah, over there. Yeah, on a large scale, very, very large scale. So apparently, if you look at the saw stream about like autonomous vehicle, before people, even today, were thinking about outside in, right? The infrastructure is smart. Mm -hmm. So it's like connective nerve cell neurons. So the car itself doesn't need to be, it could be just a blood cell, right? Doesn't need to be super, super smart. So right now we see this like trend of individual devices, like the devices around us being super powerful, super smart. But why not compensate it with additional intelligence? So really, it's back, off, uh, back to our analogy, is that Butler is the neurons. It's very low cost, easy to implement neurons. But once neuron connected, it becomes nervous system. Mm -hmm. Once you have nervous system, you can have muscle response, the one that I mentioned. Yeah. It can give robot to like instruction to where it, it should be uh, cleaning. Mm -hmm. And also, like, we can also, one, one fun thing our customers say, you, can you detect like rogue robot? <laughs> things like that, when things yeah, went off wrong. off the reservation, right? go get it, pull it back in. Yeah, exactly, like yeah. doing something weird in the restroom, this and that. Yeah, I mean, this <laughs> anyway. is like, I mean, I mean, MIT pioneered a lot, a lot of the neural network theory that's out there, everyone, mm -hmm. everyone knows that. But this neutron's interesting, so this is like the, the next gen creative AI wave coming taking this to the next level with applications, or, um, or not? Yeah, obviously we're, we're thinking of that, like um, a couple of things I, I'll mention. Again, like growing from just like a muscle response uh, analogy, like if somebody fell down in the room, then nurse should be notified. That's just an API call away in terms of tech. We're doing that today. So, but what's the next step of that? When you have collective intelligence of yeah. one, people's, one person's like daily life, then can we prevent this like a magic, like knowing this will happen ahead of time? Yeah. So a good example is that the experiments we've been doing, also some research we've been doing with Harvard Medical School. So if you have sensor understanding, let's say Hong Hao gets so old, and I'm 80 years old. <laughs> Just imagine that. So two months ago, I was like trying to get out, getting out of the bed, and then it took me two minutes to grab that, you know, the sandwich I really like from the fridge. But today, somehow it took me 10 minutes then something happening, right? And then if it's consistent trend, that means that I probably started to get mobility issue. Then what's the, what's the conclusion? I shouldn't be living alone. Yeah, right? you get a notification, you get some prescription. That's proactive, that's, that's collective intelligence. Exactly. You look at the data over time, a little historical perspective. Okay, how, so. How do you assess a market for this? Like how do you size the opportunity? Uh, I can call it like for seven billion daily active users of the buildings, everyone could be a user. Yeah. Because of this, it's the largest user interface. It's not the screens we're looking yeah. at. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And who doesn't get old? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's next for you guys? You got a great team there, you got a great device. I love the form factor. IoT Edge, we heard from our last Untethered AI, they're targeting the edge. Inference is a big part of AI. As you get some of the more dated formats in, it's obviously a modal of, of data coming in, the data is going to start blending. You get the neurons, but you also got other data. You got text, you got pictures, images of, of things. So the multimodal is hot right now. So I just see a, a future where the data merges in together. That's that's great direction you're pointing out. Um, for us, we as a small smart up, startup, um, we want to be very, very focused. Yeah. So that means efficiency. That means like how do you achieve scale with a lot of efficiency? That means like, I mentioned a lot about cost. I yeah. mentioned a lot about en energy, right? That's where people starting to look at in the AI world. Similar idea here. We see like, we see the way to make history is to have things that can be proven by time. So if you look back in the building industry, what are the things that last long mm -hmm. in the buildings? There are cameras, obviously. There's also really humble motion sensors. Yeah. So motion sensors just do one thing, right? Just sensing motion. So that's why we're very focused on lowering the cost of the device, lowering the cost mm -hmm. of the model, and making this thing so reliable, it's almost people forget about it. It's just part of yeah. the building yeah. and part of the skin, part of the sense of touch. Awesome. Uh, what a great opportunity. I love the vision. It's a bold step. IOTs everywhere are going to be a big part of the buildings and our lives. What's next for the startup? Give a plug for what you guys are doing. When, how long have you been around? What's next for you? You're hiring, looking for a certain kind of talent. Um, give a plug for the, obviously, uh, MIT spin out, obviously got some pedigree there. Um, it's out there on the, on the front end of the big AI wave. What are you guys doing? Put a plug in for the company. 
Yes, so uh, we spin out from MIT 2019, and unfortunately, officially addressing market 2021, and did our Series A uh, 2022, and then we're going to have a very large announcement in like a few days for a new round. Okay, well, we can tell us now because we're going to stream this. <laughs> <laughs> Patents? Yeah, roughly a dozen. Yeah. Mm. So, so they're awarded pending? Yeah, yeah. a lot of, uh, half of them awarded already. Nice. A yeah. lot of them pending, obviously. Mm. And obviously, probably some ideas around integrating into the devices, my iWatch, my ring, my lifestyle. I can see, is that something you guys are thinking about? Kind of that, that uh, integration into the human mm. piece of it? E eventually, I think, because right now we are very um, focused on B2B. Yeah. Again, like uh, staying focused. Yeah. But yeah. on the lines of way, we think that fast penetration in people's daily life probably is through home security mm -hmm. system. Because yeah. like people hate like motion sensor in home security system, all the false positive. And we're just like, like I mentioned, very natural upgrade of traditional motion sensor to have that sense of touch yeah. in the space without violating yeah. privacy. It's huge. I mean, it's not. It's, yeah, and it's, one not, it's not a, an intruder. It's my cat. <laughs> no. yeah. Yeah, or, or I mean, the mm. computer vision stuff right now is so compelling that you can really see the patterns. Someone's climbing a fence at a, at a business. Okay, that's not normal. Oh, rally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. Congratulations on the device. And thanks for coming in, being mm. part of the program. Mm. All Thank right. You. Thank you. We are here in Palo Alto for the Silicon Valley AI Infrastructure Leaders Program, part of theCUBE and the NYSE Wired group team and community. We'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>